I want to look at a different type of storm. Not a thunderstorm or a snowstorm, but the kind of storms that we all experience in our everyday lives. It's the kind of storms that Dr. Martin Luther King was talking about when he said, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and confidence, but where he stands in times of challenges and controversy. That's the kind of storms I'm talking about. In James, the first chapter, 2 through 4, it says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, when every face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish the work in you, so that you may be mature and complete, and not lacking in anything. When the Apostle James says this about storms, he says, Consider it pure joy, and you're like, Wait, pure joy? Yeah, James, I'm going to get excited about the storm that I'm facing. Yeah, thank you, James. But he doesn't leave it at that. He continues, and he says, consider pure joy whenever you face storms. You hear that? He says, whenever. He doesn't say if you face storms. I wish he would have said if you face storms, so that there's a possibility I won't face storms. And if I'm in a storm, I have an excuse that, oh, I'm just in a storm. But no, he says, whenever you face storms, consider pure joy. And he says, know that when you face storms, something's happening in your life. He says, even though the storm is testing your faith, it's producing perseverance and maturity. And it's in these storms, I want to remind you, it's okay to ask why. When there's a storm going on, it's okay to ask why. Jesus asked why. Jesus said, why, oh why, God, have you forsaken me? It's okay to ask why, but be sure that you're willing to obey when you don't get the answer you're looking for. In Romans 8.28 it says, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. It does not say that all things are good, or that we won't face troubles in our lives. Because we know we will face hard times, and really there's no amount of money there's no amount of fame or position that can keep us from facing hard times because we're broken. We're broken people. And when broken people crash into other broken people, we experience this pain and hurt and brokenness, and we experience these storms. It could be a job ending, a company downsizing, maybe layoffs or relationships are ending. It could be sickness, maybe the money is just not there, or you feel alone, or some things the doctor's reports have said or scare you, or even maybe literal storms and destruction they leave in their way. But in Mark 4, 35 through 41, the disciples faced a storm, and this was a storm that should have destroyed them. They come to this place where there was nowhere else they could turn but to Jesus. And through that, they found peace that surpasses all understanding. I believe in Mark 35 through 41, we can learn five principles that will help us when water's coming over the edges and our boat is small. And we don't know what we're going to do with the storm approaching us. And when we experience storms, it leads to fear. Real, genuine fear. It's a real emotion. We all experience it. And it's fear that magnifies these storms and it makes us grab onto control. And we try to say, I got this. I can push through it. Um, and it gives us the security. But really, it's a false sense of security. Because really, control is just a false sense of security. Because there's so many things in life we can't control. I mean, we control what we eat, how we spend our money, how we dress. But we do not control our next breath, and we cannot control our heartbeat. And, I mean, sometimes I feel like I try to control my friends, but I really can't. Or some of us might try to control our spouse, but we really can't. Or our children. The fact is, control is a myth. So before we dive into this biblical account from Mark, I want to give you some context. 